Hi, I'm Rod Rorick. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon and rhinoplasty expert in Dallas, Texas. I want to share with you some thoughts about rapid rhinoplasty recovery, the RRR technique by RJR. So it's the patient and the surgeon. And there are five things that really make for a more rapid, not only a recovery, but a great, beautiful result. And of course, choosing your plastic surgeon is first and foremost, your rhinoplasty surgeon. That's the key determinant in the outcome of your result because rhinoplasty is a surgery of millimeters. And it really is one of the most challenging procedures we do in all of plastic surgery. So know before you go. So the five things that the surgeon must do so you have a rapid rhinoplasty recovery. And what I mean by rapid, and of course, everybody's individual, you know, seven to 10 days, you can be back in the public eye, but your bruising and swelling can take a little longer sometimes. And it, the final result in a primary rhinoplasty is usually about nine to 12 months or longer. And in a secondary rhinoplasty, it's double that. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. So number one, it's how you do the rhinoplasty. I do it open, meticulous dissection, you know, I do it under general, close, you close all the dead space after you've done the shaping and remolding of your framework. You're taking the framework and building up the soft tissue. You're, you're wrapping it around the framework, much like, you know, reconstructing a, a beautiful architecture or a, or a sculpture. And then make sure you do it in a time efficient manner, because the longer you're in the operating room, the more swelling you have. And then closing the external dead space, splinting it meticulously, closing everything so it looks perfect. I always tell my patients, I never leave the operating room until it's as perfect as it can be. How then it heals is up to God and wound healing. So, but I will never leave till it looks perfect because that's how it's probably gonna look in 12 or, or months or so. And then the last thing is meticulous hemostasis throughout. And I use multiple different techniques and technology to do that, including transamic acid and other things that's done under a general. Uh, so it's very smooth and very seamless. And I think that's very important to do. And then what can you do as a patient? Well, all of these things are on my website and I give them to each one of my patients. And of course I give them my cell phone as well. So what are the five things you can do at home? Elevation, cold compresses around your forehead and nose and your eyes. And of course, please don't take um, any non-steroidal medications like aspirin or Advil. You know, we have a prescription for you for discomfort. And also if you need anything to relax that evening, that's fine. And then make sure you're up and about. And of course, if you have any questions, call me. And then the fourth thing is don't exercise. Don't get your heart rate above 100 for the first four weeks. That's very important. I can't tell you how many patients, I, they call me and they're in a treadmill at two weeks. That's not good for your swelling long-term. And then the last thing is post-operative taping of your nose. And, and, and of course, as you gradually go back to exercise, make sure you don't go great guns immediately. So those are the five things you can do. So it's the surgeon, the patient. And I think those are very important things. And then, you know, some common questions about, you know, when can I brush my teeth? you can do it the next day. How about showering? Of course, I don't want you to shower. You can shower from your head on downward, but I don't want you to get your nose wet or get, take a steam shower because you don't want to have your splint come off. And then the lip swelling and even the movement of the lip can be, um, can be off for several weeks because sometimes when we straighten the nose and the septum, you, you're altering some of those muscles temporarily. So, and so you can have some lip asymmetry. That's not uncommon, but it all goes away. Back to work, usually eight to 10 days, sometimes a little longer or less. We remove most of your splints and every internal external in seven days. The, the side ailer bases are done at 10 days. So usually for my out of town or international patients, they need to stay in Dallas about 10 days. Um, and then obviously no alcohol. Um, if you're on pain meds for the first uh, week, as soon as you're off pain medications, you can obviously, you know, resume if you are doing it, but do it in moderation. And obviously no smoking. I don't operate on smokers. I don't like smokers. So don't ever smoke. So if you're gonna come see me, you better stop smoking because it alters wound healing. Uh, patients do, don't do well, so don't smoke. And don't blow your nose. Don't blow your nose for four to six weeks. That's very important to do that. So when you do that, that's really important. And then some other things about what about uh, sex. Um, again, three to four weeks. You don't want to get your heart rate above uh, 100. You don't want to get a nosebleed. And so 
please abide by that. And then resuming all exercises really at four weeks, like I mentioned, and then you can gradually increase with 50% every week thereafter. And swelling. Swelling on a primary rhinoplasty, usually the first six months it's going down significantly, but by 12 months or, or so, a lot of it is gone. In secondary, you can double that. But remember, it's different in males, thick skin patients, ethnic patients, you can add, usually add six months to that at least because the nose is thicker, there's more complicated procedures done, and if there's a revision rhinoplasty, there's a lot of scar tissue. So all that is very important. So the more no, number of revisions, the longer it's gonna take. And that's really important for you to understand. You know, so know before you go, it's really important. And, and of course, I allow my patients to wear their glasses after, after the splint, because uh, you can put it on your splint, and afterwards we use something called Rhino Shield, so you can wear your splint. Um, and all those things are important. You can wash your hair after a week, shower. As soon as I take your splint off, it's not a problem. Be patient, okay? That's very important, okay? Try not to look in the mirror because every day and every minute, you, and you can text me because I get those texts, but it's normal for the swelling to go up and down. They'll say, wow, in the morning, I'm, I look great. By the evening, my nose is swollen. That's normal. Normal post-op swelling. And it may swell to the one side and to the other. That's normal. Normal asymmetric swelling. Just remember, in the operating room, it was perfect. If it wasn't perfect, I would not finish and I would still be there. I always tell the patient. So the swelling can be asymmetric. That's normal. So just listen to your surgeon. That's very important, okay? I hope this has helped you understand some of the nuances and the finesse of rhinoplasty. And so the rapid recovery rhinoplasty is really on the shoulders of myself as a rhinoplasty expert, but also on you as a patient and the consumer. So I hope this has helped you understand some of the complexities of a rhinoplasty. And so hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. Remember, um, like and subscribe to my videos. It's all about helping you be a better you and leave me your comments. Thank you so much. Have a great day.